All right, speaking of uh, natural gas, we do have a briefing on the interim report on the natural gas air quality study. Uh, Michael, um, this was uh, a request uh, by the council to, um, to have this interim look before we get the final uh, product. Uh, even though it's not a completed um, piece of work, it gives us an indication of, uh, of how this process is going. Michael. Thank you, Mayor and members of Council. As the Mayor eloquently put it, we're here on the interim report. It's preliminary data. It's just a piece of the puzzle going towards the final report. This is interim in nature. I'll be focusing today to cover quickly the study objectives, a uh, quick discussion as well on the interim report, as well as a progress update on our current field testing and a discussion on the final report. The study objectives, as you've seen in the past, focus on these four questions. These four questions are the focus to be answered in the final report. They are not completely answered and can't be completely answered within the interim report. The interim report is broken into, it's posted on the website currently. It is on the City of Fort Worth website, up and out there. It's broken into the executive summary, the ambient air monitoring, as well as the point source testing to date. I'm going to start with the ambient air monitoring. The the, current, the ambient air monitoring network was set up to do a two-month testing. We did one and three-day um, sample polls for a 24-hour basis. So that means those sample results directly compare to short-term health benchmarks. Those are hourly, daily, or weekly comparisons. The good news is there no pollutants were above those, those short-term health benchmarks. In other words, published by TCEQ, EPA, or ATSDRD. The other key component here is that network was designed with some assumptions in, uh, in mind. One of the assumptions was which way would the wind be blowing. The wind conditions during the sampling did match very similar to the historical. That means what we are trying to pick up at the monitors was being blown towards those monitors. So the emissions we wanted to pick up at the monitors were be blo be be being blown towards those monitors. Some of the key pollutants that they did identify across the network are acetaldehyde, benzene, carbon tetrachloride, chloromethane, and formaldehyde. I'm going to pause here for a minute on these. We're comparing it short term because it's a direct comparison on the daily measurements we collected within the two-month study. The long-term comparisons will be done within the public health evaluation in the final report. The long-term comparisons are most appropriately done against the average concentrations at these sites, not the daily concentrations. This is how the network was designed. We had basically seven sites, one of which moved around. The site three, you see three A and three B. Those were capturing permitted activities such as well completion, work over, fracturing operations, those type of things, pre-production activities. So that one did move to make sure we were in an area that was having those operations while we were collecting samples. The one sample site on here, uh, site four, which was in a high level of natural gas activity, as well as compressors, those type of things, that site is the one with the highest concentrations across the network. So I just want to draw that to your attention as you go through the report. The ambient air network, uh, the ambient air interim report is roughly 180 plus pages. That report contains all the raw data. It has the daily concentrations, the averages. There's a lot of data within that. So we can go through that. The conclusions drawn right now are a high level based on what we have to date. Moving into the point source testing. This is where we went, as you might recall. This is where we went back through August, September, and October. The comparisons drawn in the interim report are focused on air permitting requirements, so the, the, the permit by rule. That's the lowest level. That's kind of what used to be called an exemption. The permit by rule is the lowest level of an air permit. If your volatile organic compounds or your total hazardous air pollutants, total HAFs, are less than 25 tons per year, you qualify for a PBR, with one exception. If you have any individual HAP, one individual hazardous air pollutant that is over 10 tons per year, then you don't meet the requirement for the PBR. If you don't meet any of those thresholds, then you actually apply for, under the new source review, a full air permit. So this is permitting conditions as to what those sites would have to operate under. What we have to date is we visited 180 active well sites. 31 of those during the visits had no detectable emissions. That means with the IR camera, the toxic vapor analyzer, they did not find any detectable emissions on 31 sites. 55 out of the 57 sites that we currently have detailed information on, 
55 of those sites are well below the threshold for the PBR. We do have two sites that seem to be outliers that are above that threshold. That just means they would actually be potentially required to have a full air permit, not just operate under the permit by rule. The compressor sites, we visited seven, all of them were below the thresholds. The one gas processing plant that's in Fort Worth was also below the PBR thresholds. We also focused on some of the other activities that are involved in gas wells. This is not directly comparable to a permit condition. In other words, we can't directly compare it to the PBR threshold or anything like that. But the completion operation was almost 100% methane. The detailed analysis is in the report, almost 100% methane. We're still doing the detailed analysis on the drilling, fracturing, and saltwater disposal operations. I'm going to pause here. This is a graphic to show you where all the sites fall. The red stars are sites that had no detectable emissions. The green circles are sites where we actually have the preliminary results, where we've done the detailed analysis on those sites. And the blue squares are sites that were still pending analysis. One of the reasons we're pending analysis is, as you may recall, when we entered this, pro this project, we had first thought we might only need 45 canisters. The canisters sent to the laboratory for detailed analysis to get the chemical breakdown of the emissions. We actually expanded that. We ended up collecting 73 during the first phase. During the second phase of testing, we're out there collecting more canisters. So we need to take the time to look at all the canister results to then apply those canister, canister results across all those blue, tri the blue squares. So that's the reason that's not complete at this point. The point source, the interim report does have three main tables in it. Table one is the 66 sites where we have the detailed emissions data. You can look into that for the volatile organic compounds, the hazardous air pollutants. Table two is the 31 sites that had no detectable emissions. And table three is those sites that were still pending detailed analysis on. It does tell you the address, how many valves, fittings, tanks, those kind of things that were there and how many IR emissions or toxic vapor analyzer readings we had on those sites. That's how the interim report is outlined. The two sites that are unique, one is in near, Fort Worth, near North Fort Worth up on Mercado Drive, and one is out in West Fort Worth. Those two are just above the PBR threshold, which means they would more than likely have to apply for an air permit. This information has been discussed with TCEQ. We are looking at those sites to determine how to appropriately permit those sites to make sure they are in compliance with the current regulations. Progress update on what we're doing right now in the field. We're out there going to 180 sites. Started on January 3rd. We have been collecting canisters. They're off for laboratory analysis. Following completion of this phaser work, which should be very soon, in the next either today or in the next coming days, we'll actually do all the non-field related analysis. So we're going to be taking all of the point source data, the original phase one, the phase two data, doing the regulatory assessment, performing dispersion modeling, doing the health analysis, and doing the full build-out estimates. And then we'll be moving into the final report. This is a graphic representation of where we've been this time, what we've done since January 3rd through February 13th. So every one of those green circles is where we've gone the second time out. To put that in context is where we went the first time. There's an overlay of both. You'll see where we've been this time as well as where we were back in the fall. The fall sites are the blue blue triangles, the current sites of the green circles. What will the final report contain? Again, these seven sections, I believe we've shared that before. It's due to us on June 30th. One of the key components is the point source. Section two is not complete yet. Once that's complete, that data has been done. Then they'll also do the dispersion modeling, the public health evaluation, regulatory assessment, full build-out estimates. And then lastly, they'll be drawing conclusions and recommendations based on the totality of all that data. So the data that's shared in the interim report is just what we have today. It's preliminary. It's what we have today. It does not take into account everything listed here because we have not done sections three, four, five, or six, and we haven't even yet completed section two. That concludes my briefing if you have any questions.